Okay, well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another presentation of the online Cold Fusion Meetup. I'm Charlie Earhart, and I'll be your host for the next hour or so. And in this edition, our 250th episode of the online Cold Fusion Meetup, meeting on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017, 11 a.m., unusual time, we have Rakshith Naresh, who's going to be, he's the Cold Fusion product manager, and he's going to be presenting on busting Cold Fusion myths with the present and future of Cold Fusion. Thank you very much for actually for coming on. And with that, I'll stop sharing. You can take it over. Great. Thanks, Charlie. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. It's great to be on the CF Online Meetup on the 250th episode, Charlie. That, that's, a, that's a great moment for me to step in. That's great. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Can, can, uh, can you see my screen? We can. All right. Great. All right, welcome everyone at the 250th episode of the CF Online Meetup. Uh, so the whole idea of this presentation is over the next 40 to 45 minutes or so, I'll talk about some of the common cold fusion myths. And most of you will be aware of those myths or would have heard somebody speaking about such myths. Uh, so the whole idea of the session is to burst those myths. So that, that'll be the role that I'll be playing over the next 40 to 45 minutes. All right, let's get started. So since it's a connect meeting, uh, you can you can post your questions uh, in between the presentation as well. But only thing is, I might be able to answer those uh, at the end of the presentation. All right, let's get started. All right, anybody recognizes who's this? Anyone? I have to switch back to connect to, to actually see if anybody has responded back. Awesome, that's correct. Yeah, that's Adam Savage. And what is he known for? What, what, how did he become popular? That's because of the Mythbusters, right? So Mythbusters, as many of you are aware, was a really popular television show on, on the Discovery Channel. Uh, it's no longer aired on the Discovery Channel these days, but I, what I hear is it comes, uh, it is being aired on the Science Channel now. Uh, but uh, I also hear that Adam Savage is no longer the host uh, for this particular uh, Mythbuster series, the new Mythbuster series. But anyway, uh, Mythbusters was really popular uh, over, the over the last decade or so. And the reason it was popular was th what, what used to happen was the co-hosts, the two co-hosts would pick up a myth and try to burst the myth uh, in, that particular, uh, in that particular episode of Mythbusters. So sometimes, most, in most of the scenarios, uh, they were successful in bursting a myth, and sometimes they used to confirm a myth as well. So that is Adam Savage, who's like totally engrossed, uh, trying to, I mean, totally engrossed bursting a particular myth. What I feel is, I've been a product manager for Cold Fusion right from 2011, and what I feel is I'm no less than Adam Savage because I get to burst this cold fusion myths over and over again. And there are so many myths out there. So it's absolutely important to burst those myths. So that's the reason uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie saw me present something similar at NCDEFCON and he wanted me to present this to, to, the, to a larger audience to the CF Online Meetup. And uh, that, that's the reason uh, I'm presenting this to you here. Now, I feel I'm no less than Adam Savage, as I said. So that is me trying to burst the myths associated with cold fusion. So that's pretty much what I do. All right, now that, uh, now that we've seen this, I'll just list down some of the top myths associated with cold fusion. Hopefully by the end of the, end of the 40, 45 minutes, uh, I'll be able to burst, or you will get convinced that those myths are, burst, uh, are, are no longer valid. So starting off with the myths themselves, the most popular myth. Who uses cold fusion? Use AngularJS. Believe me, I've heard this. So people tend to make comparisons with JavaScript and cold fusion. Such an apples to apples comparison, right? So I'm sure many of you have heard this as well. So who uses cold fusion? So let's take a look in my, I'll talk about who uses cold fusion today uh, in my presentation in just a bit. Now this one amazes me the most. Cold Fusion died alongside Trinosaurus. So right from 2003, I see comments being posted that Cold Fusion is dead. If there were ever an award for fake death reports, Cold Fusion will clearly, clearly win that because we have seen death reports right from 2003 and the product continues to do really, really well, which I will 
uh, which I will showcase or prove in the next few uh, in the next few slides as well. So that's the next popular myth that you might have heard in the past or maybe in the recent uh, recent past as well. This is one of the myth. Your bad code or configuration is not the root cause of, the, of, of your poor performing application. Cold fusion is. It's almost as if cold fusion is the root cause for every evil out there. That's not true at all. And we will see how some of our some of our really, really large customers are building high performing applications using cold fusion because they realize that it's not cold fusion's issue, but it's actually something to do with the configuration or the application code and try to fix the root cause uh, without uh, you know, judging the platform as such. This one other myth, cold fusion is not present on Adobe's homepage, so stop using it. Now, this is like saying, uh, I want to buy Amazon Kindle from Amazon's home, uh, from Amazon.com, but these days, Amazon is showcasing only Amazon Echo, so let me not buy Kindle. It's, it's that kind of a comparison. Cold fusion is not present on Adobe's homepage, so stop using it. So this is one other myth. Adobe is a really large company with 300 plus products. There is only limited real estate available on Adobe's homepage. So Adobe would want to focus on the products that makes absolute business sense and get maximum attention of, it, of a larger user base. So that's the reason why Cold Fusion cannot be showcased on the homepage, but rather many other products are never showcased on Adobe's homepage. It is almost always our creative cloud or the digital marketing cloud that gets showcased on the Adobe homepage. So that's one other myth. Now what I'll now, what I'll now talk about is Cold Fusion's progress over the last one decade. Uh, starting off with product progress. So I just want to talk about the progress that we have made over the last 10 years in terms of the product, in terms of security. We have significantly moved the needle from a security perspective. And the last one is community. So the community itself has transformed over the last 10 years. And I'll talk about community transformation as well. Starting off with the product transformation. So if you look at the needs of Cold Fusion developers, the, the number one primary need for developers like you is a high performing and scalable platform. And we completely get that. That's mostly because uh, you have critical business applications running on, the, on, on Cold Fusion. So it needs to really scale well and handle the ad additional load that you may get from time to time. The second one is security. Uh, security is absolutely important in today's world. Uh, very soon we'll reach a stage where, where there will be one zero day vulnerability discovered pretty much every other day. Uh, so security from a, from a web application standpoint is really, really important and we understand that uh, well uh, when we release a particular version of the product. The third one is productivity. Uh, Cold Fusion continues to be the most productive language or uh, productive web application development platform out there. And we continue to add features to make Cold Fusion developer more productive. That's one other uh, access on which we deliver value. And the last one is future ready. So the applications that you build today must be able to cater to the needs of the future. And the platform should enable you to build future ready applications so that we have, we have significant focus on being future ready as well. So we realize that we can deliver value across any of these four access. Uh, the most basic one is high performing and scalable platform and security, which is totally non-negotiable and we understand that, whereas being future ready is more aspirational. Uh, it's no longer uh, a differentiation for Cold Fusion to make hard things easy. It's, at, it's pretty much an expectation that anything that we do has to be really makes easy with Cold Fusion because that has been the mantra of Cold Fusion over the last couple of decades. That's the need. Now, this is the most popular diffusion of innovation curve. I'm sure many of you have seen this in the past. Uh, so this is how an adoption of a new product or a new service uh, starts off. You start off with a research and development, then there will be introduction through, to, through early stage adoption, then there is growth and then there is maturity and eventually decline. Cold Fusion has had 20 plus years now that, uh, of its existence. So very few products have lasted for 20 plus years. And despite that, we are in the early maturity stage. There is enough growth happening. The, the growth continues to happen for Cold Fusion, and, and I'll touch upon the numbers in just a bit. 
but the key point is cold fusion has been able to survive for 20 plus years only because we've been able to pivot at pivot at key intervals. We've been able to transform the product into something more meaningful and something more useful for our developers right from its inception till 2017, which is which is uh, which is today. Uh, so what we what started off as a simple database query language that like the DBML that all of us know, right? Uh, what started off as a simple language to query databases transformed itself to become a script and a tag based high performing productivity pay, productivity language for, for web application development. Soon over the years it transformed into an enterprise hub to offer productivity services built in and uh, most of us know the event gateways. So event gateways was an innovation back then because you could pretty much talk to any external service. So it is such innovations that have that, that have caused additional growth and sustenance of the product over the last 20 plus years, including the Ajax feature set uh, in somewhere in 2007 when we built the Ajax feature set. Back then it was an innovation. Uh, it, when you look at it in the, in the hindsight, it may look as though that there are other tools available. Why did Cold Fusion even focus on Ajax capabilities? But back when we introduced it in 2007, uh, there was no jQuery. JavaScript was not even half as popular. The Ajax plumbing capabilities actually help developers, Cold Fusion developers, get a head start into Ajax development. So I would definitely consider Ajax as an innovation, particularly the plumbing feature set that we introduced definitely as an innovation. And we were one of the first ones to venture uh, into that space back then. The overall point I'm trying to make is Cold Fusion has been able to sustain for so long only because we've been able to make this drastic shifts in focus uh, over the last many years. I'll also talk about uh, some of the recent developments and how we have transformed the product over the last decade. So this is the progress that we have made. Uh, the four axes that I spoke about, high performing and scalable platform, secure platform, productivity and future ready. Uh, those are the four axes that we saw in terms of need. Uh, our vision a decade ago was to be the most high performing and productive platform uh, pro or a productive backend for any kind of client side technology, both existing and futuristic client side technologies. We had to be uh, the, the, the best backend available. So with that vision, uh, as early as 2010, we started looking at HTML5. So that those were the days when Flash was getting defocused by Adobe, so we thought we have to provide a significant alternative to our customers and developers. So that's when we started investing in HTML5. Uh, HTML5 WebSockets is one of the innovation there. For instance, WebSockets is, is popular today, but it has been there in the product uh, right from 2011 onwards. Uh, so it's so much easier to use WebSockets within Cold Fusion to push notifications onto the client side from the server side. REST web services as well. So we introduced the REST capabilities uh, back in Cold Fusion 10, using which you can easily expose your business logic with just a few lines of code. All you have to do is just enable the REST attribute and mention what parameter you want to use uh, for your REST service, and you can easily expose your business logic as a REST-based web service. So that was Cold Fusion 10's focus on HTML5 and REST. Then we turned to mobility. Uh, we focused on mobility using using CFML. You could build a, build a full-fledged uh, mobile application development, uh, so Cold Fusion was effectively a, uh, a mobile application development platform and it was powered through Adobe's PhoneGap technology. One of the more recent focus areas is all about API management. So the Cold Fusion, in Cold Fusion 2016, we came up with the new API management capabilities and that has worked really well for us. For instance, mobility did not work as well as we had hoped to, but API management is doing really well. The point is, we will continue to, take, continue to take such risks. Effectively, these were bets that we took at those particular points of time. In hindsight, it all looks so, ro looks, looks so rosy. For instance, HTML5 and REST, mobility, API management, and the future focus on microservices all seems to gel well to our vision of uh, being the best platform out there, but the best backend out there for any kind of client-side technology. But back then, when we focused on it, those were effectively bets that we were taking or risks that we are taking. And just like any other bet, uh, we fail in some and we succeed in some. And mobility was not that big a, not that big a success, but the API management is, has been a significant success. The point is we will continue to take those risks and take the product to new levels. And that is what we are trying to do as a product team uh, within Adobe. Going forward, our focus is on microservices as well. 
Uh, we'll soon have official Docker images for Cold Fusion, and talk about that uh, in just a bit. So Cold Fusion 2016 is the current version. I'm sure many of you are already using Cold Fusion 2016. Uh, in a nutshell, Cold Fusion 2016 is an extremely high-performing and scalable platform. Our engineers did an excellent job of improving existing applications' performance by up to 30 percent. Uh, so there is a white paper available as well that justifies this claim. So you can go to adobe.com slash products slash Cold Fusion and go to the white paper section and there's a white paper called uh, Cold Fusion Server Performance, uh, performance, uh, performance Brief. I think that's the name of the white paper. Uh, you can take a look at that and get more details on how you can leverage, how we can extract the, uh, that additional 30% uh, from your existing applications, even without having to change uh, application code. We also focus significantly on scalability. The session storage, the sessions um, management is no longer happening in memory. You can actually offload that onto a high-performing distributed cache, and that is backed by Redis. So this will uh, directly assist you in, in scaling your applications really well. So that's the high performing and scalable platform. I just want to be sure that there are no issues and you continue, you can, you, you can continue to, I mean, you, you are hearing me well. Okay. I don't think there's any issue. Let's just go back well, to my yep. presentation. Yeah, we saw the high performing and scalable platform. Uh, the next one is security. So security continues, as I said, security continues to be really important for us. Uh, so we came up with a security code analyzer as a part of Cold Fusion 2016. Uh, so this is baked into Cold Fusion Builder that talks to Cold Fusion 2016 server. What it does is it does a static code analysis of your existing application code and, and figures out uh, if there are any kind of security vulnerabilities. Adobe is a corporate sponsor for OWASP. OWASP is a really popular open source uh, web application security pro web application security project, and uh, <clears throat> Adobe works closely with OWASP. And uh, we came up with a scanner that can actually scan your uh, existing application code. So be it new applications or legacy applications, all you have to do is just run them by the security analyzer, and you will be able to figure out if there are any kind of vulnerabilities. The nice thing about the security analyzer is that it can scan your application code and also not just point out vulnerabilities, but it will also tell you how to go about mitigating those vulnerabilities as well. It provides you a neat report with remediation tips. Uh, this is uh, this continues to be uh, uh, our effort to make the product uh, secure by default. So this is one of the attempts that we have made to make the platform secure by default. Uh, Cold Fusion 2016 also prevents default access uh, to administrator outside of local host. So with, through that, you know, one step of the lockdown guide uh, it has been already taken care of you, taken care for you uh, in Cold Fusion 2016. From a productivity point of view, we came up with a new command line interface in Cold Fusion 2016. Uh, what this does is it gives you the ability to run CFML from the command line even without having to start the server. Uh, using the command line interface, you can now use your existing CFML skills to start scripting as well, uh, be it file manipulation, setting up test databases, or moving your environment from your uh, testing environment to production. All of this can be done through scripts using CFML just from the command line. There's a significant focus on PDF as well. We came up with really interesting uh, security-related features in Cold Fusion 2016 around sanitization, redaction, and archival. Uh, so sanitization is a, is a standardized process. Uh, what it does is it strips off sensitive information from your PDF. Once you get the resulting PDF, uh, you can actually go ahead and share that PDF without having to worry about any sensitive information that can get that can potentially get embedded in the PDF in the form of metadata or JavaScript that might have some sensitive information uh, that is sensitive to your organization as well. Uh, we have redaction capabilities as well uh, using uh, using Cold Fusion uh, 2016. You can also redact programmatically redact portions of your PDF and also archiving. So we now support the latest archiving standard. So if you ever have the need to archive a PDF uh, for a really long time, so let's say 10 years down the line, uh, you want to open up open up the open up a PDF that was created today uh, in any future version of Acrobat. 
uh, that's when you would archive a PDF. So there's a standardized process support available in Cold Fusion for archiving it, archiving a PDF as well. Language as well. So language is one of the focus area for us. We continue to improve CFML as a language to help you be more productive uh, in your application programming. Uh, with Cold Fusion 2016, we introduced new productivity functions, operators, and also new data types as well as a part of uh, Cold Fusion 2016. To be future ready, uh, we invested uh, in API Manager. Uh, though it's just version one uh, from an API management perspective, uh, we clearly are the leaders there in terms of performance. A single node of API Manager can handle up to a billion requests with the latency being less than 30 milliseconds. So the way the API management platform works is it's actually a server that sits in front of your Cold Fusion server routing all API calls from the API Manager platform onto the Cold Fusion backend. So if anybody's using it, they'll be worried about, okay, API Manager gives me this additional functionality, but what about the additional latency that it, it can potentially add? So even with billions of requests and thousands of users, we have tested that our latency continues to be less than 30 milliseconds. The solution is extremely scalable as well. We have a scale factor for around 1.8 times for the throughput, and you can pretty much double the number of users. Uh, one of the significant differentiators is that it has, it has an extremely simplified workflow when compared to competition. Uh, it has this really simple workflows using which you can set up uh, or your fully uh, your, your entire API management workflows uh, with ease uh, using the intuitive uh, user interface. So that's Cold Fusion 2016 in a nutshell. I just want to quickly touch upon the value add of uh, the API manager uh, in my next slide. So why did we even invest in API management platform in Cold Fusion? Uh, so we realized that more than 70% of Cold Fusion developers now now where it's some kind of a REST service or a SOAP based web service. Now, if you have to take such a such an API or a web service to production, you have to follow a series of steps. Step one to seven outlined in this particular slide. Like in step one, you would typically define your business objective. Uh, why do you even need an API? Who do you want to reach uh, reach with your API? What is the kind of reach that you want with the API? All that happens in step number one, where you define a set of business objectives. In step number two, that's where you go about designing your API. If you choose REST-based services, uh, you will figure out what kind of resources you want, what kind of methods that you want on those resources in step number two. You can choose REST or SOAP to design your API. Step number three is where you actually code the API. You can potentially use CFML or any other backend technology like .NET or PHP to code your API. That happens in step number three. In step number four, it doesn't stop at step number three. There is a lot more, a lot of the things that needs to be accomplished to take an API to, to market. Step number four is securing the API. For instance, uh, you need to have significant, uh, strong access control mechanisms in place to ensure that only authorized users get to access your API. And also APIs themselves are vulnerable to quite a few security attacks. So you should be able to prevent such security attacks in step number four. Step number five is where you manage the entire life cycle of the API, uh, deprecate an API, publish an API, or even delete an API. So there's an entire life cycle associated. Uh, and also you might want to define certain service level agreements with your API. For instance, to your platinum customer, you might want to have an, un an unlimited service level agreement or an SLA. Uh, whereas for your gold customers or silver customers, there might be some restrictions on the number of times a particular API may be called. So all that happens in step number five. Step number six is a really important step. Once you have an API or a web service, you need to engage with the developers. Developers could be within your organization or outside your organization. Uh, you, need a, you need a way in which developers can view the documentation associated of your API and also try out and test the API without having to write a single line of code and then subscribe to the API as well. So step number six on engagement is really important. Step number seven is where you measure the impact of a particular, uh, of your API strategy. So you need detailed analytics to figure out who's consuming the API, when was it even invoked. All these details comes in uh, in the form of detailed analytics. Cold Fusion's focus so far was just on helping, helping you with step number three, which is coding your API. Cold Fusion 2016's API management platform gives you all of this so that you can just focus on step one, two, and three. 
and focus on your business logic alone. Everything else is completely taken care of by the API management platform. So it takes, so using which you can take your APIs faster to market and that's the whole value proposition of the API management platform. So this has been, uh, this, this has been received really well by our developers and customers. Uh, so I'll just talk about some of the adoption that we have had uh, for this new API management platform as well in just a bit. As I said, since it's a gateway, it also assists in some uh, some portions of designing your API as well. This is the roadmap going forward. Uh, sometime this year, or maybe early, it might get pushed to early next year as well. We'll have the official Docker images uh, from our official Cold Fusion images uh, for Docker uh, from Adobe. Uh, we're also looking at uh, making available, uh, ma making Cold Fusion available on Red Hat OpenShift container platform, which is a really popular container platform out there. So that's some immediate uh, uh, updates in terms of Docker and Red Hat OpenShift platform. Uh, going forward, next year we'll have the Cold Fusion 2018 release, a performance management suite. So we'll have an entire suite of tools using which you can significantly improve the performance of your existing applications. So I'll talk about that. We have built-in support for distributed cache. Our lockdown mechanism is completely automated. Uh, we have a really interesting asynchronous programming support as well. I'll touch upon that and also improved REST support. So from a PDF point of view, we'll have a new Chrome-based HTML to PDF conversion engine, the latest one from Adobe as a part of uh, Cold Fusion 2018. And we'll continue to focus on API management uh, with threat protection of APIs, as well as developer analytics uh, for API management. So that's a quick, quick insight into the roadmap. Now, with all the transformation that we just saw right from uh, you know, HTML5, REST, onto mobility, onto API management, and onto microservices, uh, we have result as well. Uh, so this is the result that we see. Uh, so I, I did a survey sometime early, sometime late last year, uh, to figure out how critical Cold Fusion is uh, from a technology point of view for our, for our in our customer organizations. Uh, so our customers were supposed to rate between zero and five, five being most critical and zero being uh, not important at all. And 76% of our customer organizations rated Cold Fusion as five on five, which means that it was a critical part of a technology stack. Now the next question that comes up is who is you in using Cold Fusion? 50% of Fortune 500 companies use Cold Fusion today. And this is based on a customer list that we have who continue to actively buy Cold Fusion from us. 70% and that number is higher for Fortune 100. 70% 70 of Fortune 100 companies use Cold Fusion and continue to buy Cold Fusion from us. What is also interesting to see is Cold Fusion is not just about maintaining existing applications. 70% of our developers build new applications every single year. And I just did a recent survey for 2017 and this number is higher. It's, it's actually 78%. So 78% of our developers are building new applications and it's, it's a great trend to see that the new applications are the number of uh, the, the number of developers who are building new applications or, or rather the percentage of developers who are building new applications is increasing uh, year over year. Some quick customer success stories, uh, Market America or Shop.com. So they are an e-commerce based company uh, founded in 1992. Just take a look at the number of PHP sites that they have and the Java sites versus the Cold Fusion websites. 15 for PHP, 23 for Java and 292 Cold Fusion websites. And just, just take a look at the scale of this entire operations. For instance, they get 46 million monthly page views with 2.93 million visitors monthly. And that is the kind of scale that they're able to get with Cold Fusion 2016. They're on Cold Fusion 2016. And what was really interesting was uh, they recently replaced, uh, replaced layer seven. So they were heavily invested in layer seven and uh, they replaced uh, as an API management platform and they replaced layer seven with the, our new API management platform in Cold Fusion 2016. Some of the other recent success, uh, success stories or case studies, Sign Up Genius is one of the interesting company that uses Cold Fusion on the cloud, Pro Workflow, online project management solution, uh, and it's, that's an interesting company that continues to use Cold Fusion, and Jiva, they are into help desk and customer service and they are particularly interested in the security capabilities of Cold Fusion and they view that as a differentiator when compared to competition. And uh, they, are, they, are, they continue to use Cold Fusion from a security because uh, Cold Fusion provides them the desired security that is needed. 
and talk about security as well in the coming slides. More result of the API manager customer stories. A global cash card is one of the company that has used that is using API manager uh, to expose their APIs. They are a really large pay card solution company, uh, and they have a and it's a financial trans. Those are those are hundred percent financial transactions with with a lot of scale, a lot of users trying to access it, and all this is powered through the API manager and Cold Fusion. Plant companies is one other organization uh, that is into concierge providing concierge service as well as janitorial services so they have an interesting ipad app which is a facial recognition app for checking in and checking out janitors so what they do is this particular ipad app is powered by the api manager the api itself that powers this facial recognition is is managed by cold fusion's api management platform Data Stream Connection is one of uh, one of our other partner. Uh, they work with uh, really large federal projects, and uh, they uh, they have uh, helped Homeland Security, USDA, and FDA to use the new API management platform available within Cold Fusion. And uh, most of the APIs uh, from for Homeland Security, USDA, and FDA are now backed by uh, by Cold Fusion's API manager. QBI is one of the company that's into payroll processing. Uh, they're also into uh, re they're also into retar 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 planning administration as well. So they also make use of API manager in production. That's the customer usage. But how is Adobe doing from a from a revenue standpoint using uh, through Cold Fusion? Uh, so if you look at it, this is the trend that we have from 2012 to 2016. Uh, we have seen a 25% absolute growth, uh, which is the increase in revenue for us. 25% absolute growth. And a 12% compounded growth year uh, release over release, and what those indicates is it, Cold Fusion is doing really well for Adobe. So Adobe will be uh, Adobe will continue to invest significantly in Cold Fusion. So this is generally a myth again: is Adobe even interested in Cold Fusion? The results speak for itself. Uh, there is increased revenue uh, using Cold Fusion, and Adobe would be interested in continue to you know, maintain and manage and also build newer versions of the product. The very fact that we are working on the next version of the product uh, gives you an indication. It's not just revenue. We have also seen an increase in the number of active Cold Fusion accounts. When I say Cold Fusion accounts, these are customers who continue to buy Cold Fusion from us. From 2012 to 2016, we have seen a 25% absolute growth. Uh, with a 6% compounded annual growth in the number of active Cold Fusion accounts. So when I say active, uh, they are the ones who have bought Cold Fusion from us in the recent past. I'm not talking about, uh, when I say past, it's not like many years ago. In the recent past, uh, the number of active Cold Fusion, in, they've bought Cold Fusion from us in the recent past, and there has been an increase in the number of such active Cold Fusion accounts uh, over the last uh, four years. Some third-party data as well. Uh, so, so this data is coming from builtwith.com. Uh, this is based on the number of public websites based on Cold Fusion. So what you see on the left-hand side is, is the numbers from 2009, and what you see on the right-hand side is number from 2000, 2017. Uh, so there are some ups and downs for some reason, but if, if overall, what, you, what I want to highlight is the increase in the number of public websites. That's 2009 and 2017. You see an upward trend in the number of public websites out there using Cold Fusion, and as most many of you are aware, there is significant presence for Cold Fusion on the intranet as well. Uh, we are assume, we assume, generally assume that there is five times more presence in the number of applications on the intranet than on the internet. So if if, if you can assume that it's growth on the intranet as well, if you can extrapolate this growth on, onto the intranet, there is significant growth overall for Cold Fusion as a platform. So that's the product uh, product transformation. I'll now touch upon security. Okay, I just wanted to be sure that uh, you can still hear me. I know there's some activity happening on the chat board. I'll come to that uh, when I end my presentation. From a security standpoint, uh, within Adobe, we follow this Adobe Secure Product Lifecycle, uh, which is called SPLC. Uh, we work closely with product security incident response team or PSIRT. So PSIRT are a group of security experts within Adobe uh, who work closely with the product team and help us in training and certification of the product team itself uh, along with planning of features, security related features for the next version of the product, designing of various features so that there is security imbibed right from the design stage 
uh, on to the implementation as well. So, so right from planning, design, implementation, testing, and eventually shipping features uh, that are completely secure proof. And even when we release a particular product, if there are any kind of public vulnerabilities uh, known that the PISA team comes to know of, they work closely with uh, the product team and ensure that we quickly patch the security related issues uh, within the product. Total Fusion is a secure platform because we keep releasing, uh, releasing security updates. For instance, Cold Fusion 10 has had uh, 22 security updates. Cold Fusion 11 has had 12 security updates so far, not 11, 12 security updates. And Cold Fusion 2016 has had four security updates so far. So on an average, uh, we pretty much release an update uh, every every quarter. So if you just ensure that you're if you if you can just ensure that you're on the latest update security update, uh, so that tends to have or that has all the patches available for all the security vulnerabilities uh, that have been that Adobe has come across or reported by third party users as well. <clears throat> there are various other secure facets of Cold Fusion. For instance, the product features itself uh, help ensure security. There is a secure profile configuration. Uh, within the product that many of you may be aware of. So that is one other attempt to make the product secure by default. A secure profile will ensure that all the security settings are enabled by default just by selecting the secure profile. Uh, blocking external access to Cold Fusion Administrator, that's now available in Cold Fusion 2016. Uh, there is built-in protection against top 10 threats from OWASP, not just the security analyzer that I spoke about, but there are features using which you can prevent uh, say top 10 threats, top 10 OWASP threats using the functionality. There is a security code analyzer as well, the one that I spoke to you about. So that's the product feature. Uh, what about the product team? We do have a dedicated security expert in the product uh, who, who, man, who pretty much uh, manage anything to do with security in the product. Uh, and 100% of the product team is secure software engineering certified. So we have been trying to move the needle with security with a whole range of initiatives uh, over the last decade or so. And we have seen results uh, associated with that as well. So here is the result. Between 2011 and 2016, this was data coming in from cvedetails.com. Uh, that's a third party uh, website which posts every single vulnerability available, uh, vulnerability reported on all, all possible technologies. Uh, if you look at Cold Fusion and its competition, Cold Fusion is clearly the platform that has the least number of vulnerabilities reported between 2011 and 2016. There's PHP, there's Java, Ruby on Rails and .NET. What is also interesting is there are a particular class of security vulnerabilities called zero-day vulnerability. Cold Fusion has had no zero-day vulnerability since 2012. While every other player has had multiple zero-day vulnerabilities, Cold Fusion has had no zero-day vulnerability at all. The last we saw Cold Fusion zero day vulnerability was uh, sometime late 2012. So that's the result from a security perspective. On the community side of things, uh, we do have the Adobe Cold Fusion Summit, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks from now. It is clearly the largest developer conference for Adobe. Uh, this is the fifth year that we are running the Adobe Cold Fusion Summit. Uh, we pretty much sell out the number of uh, tickets that we have. Uh, we have more than 500 developers who attend uh, the Adobe Cold Fusion Summit. So it's happening again in Las Vegas in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and Charlie initially was talking about user groups uh, before we started this presentation. So we do have 100 plus active Cold Fusion user groups worldwide and Adobe works closely with the user groups uh, across, across the world. We also have 80 plus uh, large discuss discussions, one-on-one -on -one discussions with our large customers uh, to ensure that they get the latest information about the product as well as the future roadmap. Uh, we're also doing this roadshow. So we do visit, uh, so for instance, this year we had roadshows in 12 different cities across the United States uh, in 2017. We also did this in Europe uh, just, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we also have a free course for community colleges or universities based on web application development. So this is a completely free curriculum available uh, from Adobe. Uh, for web application development where it starts off with stuff like javascript uh, html5 css uh, and then uh, delves into server-side programming all through cfml we also have free online courses uh, sponsored by adobe and the community as well that you can easily access
Uh, we have all I've, I've spoken about this in the past, so we are coming up with a really interesting project called, called Adobe Cold Fusion Fiddle. It's a completely browser-based application, so that lets you type in the code, uh, your CFML code in the browser, and see the output right there. You can also upload your projects, so, so there's an upload button and a share button as well. For instance, let's say you want to ask a query on Stack Overflow, uh, asking people about a particular issue that you have. So you no longer have to paste a full code snippet and the entire output on Stack Overflow. All you have to do is just share a link for the Cold Fusion Fiddle project. Experts in the community can just take a look at it, uh, open up the project, make changes to those, uh, make changes to the application code and share it back with you as well. So this can be really, really useful for Cold Fusion developers. There has been some delay in going live with the product. Uh, so we will soon have an update around the Cold Fusion Fiddle. The second really interesting one is the Cold Fusion Community Portal. Uh, so let me just show you the Community Portal. So this is the Cold Fusion Community Portal that will soon be live. Uh, it is not live for everybody yet. So the whole idea is to, is to create a single watering hole for Cold Fusion community. It can be a friend, guide, or mentor, or anything that you want to be, as it rightly says there. So I'll just show you a quick demo of the community portal. So let's say uh, you are in the community portal and you want to figure out or ask a question about, let's say, scheduled tasks. Let me just go ahead and type in scheduled tasks. So it will show me. Uh, a particular question and answer that has been already answered. It will show me blog posts associated if there are any on scheduled tasks or if none of these answers any of your question, you can actually go ask a question yourself for community to start contributing as well. So that is the nice thing about uh, <clears throat> about uh, what you see here. Oh, I have to sign in. Oh boy. Ah, sorry about this. I should have signed in earlier. Oops. I'm just signing in. Just give me a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm now signed in. So as a community member, you can go ask any of your queries right here. It has this interesting blog post, FAQs on Cold Fusion, uh, testimonials, uh, videos, any tutorials is available right here. You can also showcase your work and even start a discussion associated with the product. So either you can view the existing discussions right here or you can go contribute yourself. You can go ask a question or you can also write a blog post and post it on the community portal. Uh, so, you can, so the nice thing about this question and answers is that it is integrated into the Adobe forums as well. So if you, whenever you ask a question here, it'll be posted on, on Adobe forums as well, and you'll be notified of, uh, any, uh, any, of any responses on your post in the community portal itself. Uh, you can also make, write a blog post or start a discussion or showcase your work or write a testimonial. All of this is possible right here. Now, there are incentives as well. So one is you trying to find out information and get information from community experts. Uh, but there's other side where community experts get incentivized as well. So let me just quickly show you how uh, the community experts will be incentivized as well. So this is my profile. So right now, uh, I'm basically a newbie so that's where everybody starts out there are various levels in the community portal so starting off with newbie and there are points associated for every single contribution made by the community expert or even new so if you want to contribute to the community portal there are points associated for every single interaction on the community portal so that's and that's a newbie level so then there's the explorer level guide and there are incentives available 12 months complimentary license of cold fusion builder invitation to host Adobe live webinars and it goes all the way up to legend which gets you 12 months of complimentary license for Cold Fusion Builder, invitation to host Adobe live webinar, invitation to 
speak at CF Summit, 12 months complimentary license of Cold Fusion Enterprise, and complimentary invite, including travel and accommodation for Adobe Cold Fusion Summit. And this, this is how you can get points for uh, all your contribution on the community portal. So this is a really interesting uh, platform that we have built. And uh, this will soon be live. It is not live yet. But uh, we, we do have a soft launch that is happening right now for a selected few. If any of you listening to this is interested in making some blog posts to seed some initial content, uh, do reach out to me and I can provide you some early access so that you can start contributing to the community portal as well. So that's the community portal. Let me just get back to my presentation. So with all the changes to the community portal and uh, initiatives in the community, the result is that uh, we have had a lot of open source, increase in the number of open source repositories available for CFML right from 2012 to 2016. There has been an exponential increase in the number of open source repositories on GitHub uh, for Cold Fusion. One of the third party data, uh, this is a programming language ranking from Redmond. Cold Fusion continues to maintain its ranking over the last few years, right from 2013 to 2017. Some of the really popular languages have gone down in ranking, but Cold Fusion has been able to maintain its ranking. This ranking is based on the number of uh, GitHub pull requests as well as the number of posts on Stack Overflow. Uh, as much as 45% of our customers have an active support contract with Adobe, so they would ideally reach out to Adobe directly rather than posting on Stack Overflow. So despite that limitation that we have with uh, the reduced stack overflow posts, Cold Fusion has been able to maintain its ranking over the last few years on Red Monk programming language ranking. This one is on Adobe's commitment to Cold Fusion. How committed is Adobe to Cold Fusion? Uh, so with every version of the product, we have five years of core support and two years of extended support. Uh, with Cold Fusion 2018, uh, we have support commitments till like 2025. The version that we are working right now has support commitments to like 2025. So that showcases, uh, that, should, that should give you some sense of the long-term commitment that Adobe has uh, for the product. Now let's go back to the myths that we started off with. Who uses Cold Fusion? I'm sure that myth, I'm, I'm hoping that, that myth is bust, busted because I showed you data on who's using Cold Fusion. Uh, Cold Fusion died no way and i just showed you showed you a slide on our uh, adobe's commitment to cold fusion and it had our extended support commitments uh, being there till 2025 your bad code or config is not the root cause we saw some of our really large customers like shop.com building really high performing and scalable websites using cold fusion so that myth is busted and the last one i'll not even try to bust this because i believe that that was that's a myth that was supposed to be busted as soon as it was born uh, because it's obviously not possible to showcase every single product on Adobe's homepage. So that's the myth busting part. I just want to spend the next five minutes talking about Cold Fusion Ether. I wanted to show you some demo associated with Ether as well, but uh, I don't think I'll have time for a demo. Uh, but I definitely encourage you to join the pre-release uh, for Cold Fusion Ether. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is live right now, so all you have to do is send, send uh, either fill up a survey available on blogs.coldfusion.com. So this is there's one of the posts that invites pre-release users. So all you have to do is just go fill up the survey uh, to, to get an invite uh, for the pre-release. At a very high level, these were our top focus areas, performance, security, language, uh, PDF and we're also trying to ease the upgrade from one version to another uh, So we are planning to focus on a full-fledged performance management suite Which is a set of tools that will help you uh, Auto-tune the connector so connector is the piece that uh, talks that, that connects your web server and a cold fusion application server So we are building an auto connected tuner so, so that it's no longer a blind game for auto tuning for tuning connector configuration uh, because connector conf a bad connector configuration can have a significant performance impact to you. So we are planning to take care of that through the auto-connected tuner. Auto-connected tuner will uh, will listen to your incoming traffic. Based on the incoming traffic, it will tune the connector uh, based on the dynamic traffic coming in. We'll have a completely revamped, revamped monitoring solution as well. The whole idea is of this performance management suite is that uh, this is a server that can be installed separately on a different machine. It, it doesn't run in the same JVM as 
as Cold Fusion. You can install this performance management suite server onto a different machine altogether, and it has a high performing data store as well, so that you can so all your production servers or test servers or development servers will just ping data onto this performance management suite. And because it has a high performing data store, you can go back and forth uh, on any time scale as well. For instance, let's say you faced a crash, let's say a couple of weeks ago, you can easily switch the time of time duration as well um, at any point of time because we keep track of all that through the performance management suite. Significant runtime improvements have been made as well, have been made and will be made for Cold Fusion 2018. And we'll also have support for distributed cache. So we just have support for storing session information on the distributed cache in Cold Fusion 2016. Uh, we will have support for uh, multiple distributed cache engines. For instance, uh, there will be default support for Redis. Uh, there will also be support for uh, JCS as well as Memcached, which are some of the popular uh, caching solutions. Uh, the nice thing about this entire feature set is that uh, we'll also have a pluggable architecture where in which you, all you have to do is just implement an interface. And once you implement an interface, you can actually plug in your own distributed cache as well. Uh, more on the object, uh, more on the security side, we'll, we'll be completely coming up with a tool that can automate the lockdown mechanism for you so that you don't have to worry about automating and following those manual steps, which could be error prone. So this is one of the step to make the platform secure by default. Uh, on the language side of things, I'm particularly excited about asynchronous programming. We will have support for something known as promises, using which uh, you can actually uh, offload uh, execution onto a different thread and get notified when a particular result is available for you to process. Uh, this can have a significant benefit on the performance of your, exist of your existing or new applications. Uh, we'll finally have support for null as well, mostly because um, or these days, it's, there's a lot more interaction with JavaScript, and JavaScript has null, and Cold Fusion doesn't treat, doesn't have doesn't treat null as null. Uh, so there's a serialization and deserialization mess that happens, uh, and you have, you'll have, uh, we realize that our developers have to work around those issues. So that's the reason we are planning to introduce uh, support for null, uh, more object-oriented syntax, and a lot of REST improvements as well. So REST-based web services uh, is already quite simple with Cold Fusion. Uh, we are planning to come up with a REST play interface using which you can easily, it's, it's like a one-stop hub uh, for anything to do with REST-based web services. You no longer have to reg register your, your web services in the administrator. All you have to do is just provide the directory information and it'll, uh, it'll, it'll use the swagger definition of the REST-based web services and display all information associated uh, with the REST-based web services in that REST play area itself. You can also read the documentation and play around with the REST-based services in this REST play uh, area that we have created. Uh, PDF, we will have a new HTML to PDF engine as well and ease of upgrade. So that is one thing that we thought of focusing, but we realized that based on the feedback uh, that uh, it is not that significantly important because it's just uh, once in a couple of years kind of a thing. Uh, what I also did earlier this year was uh, seek customer feedback. So I did speak about all the all the all the performance improvements that we are planning to do, security improvements, language, and then asked our developers to allocate hundred dollars. So I did a hundred dollar test to figure out which ones really matter to you the most, and clearly performance dominated. Uh, so the whole idea was to give give you hundred dollars and then ask you to allocate those hundred dollars based on the ones that matter to you the most. And uh, performance had an average rating of 35, and it was clearly the leader uh, in terms of where you want to see us focus on for the next version, uh, followed by security and language. Uh, PDF uh, is on the lower side because it's uh, only, uh, based on our estimates, only 35% of our developers use PDF. But for those who use PDF, we understand it's really critical, critical part of the functionality, so we will continue to improve that. And ease of upgrade barrier is something that we will not focus on based on the feedback that we have received. Uh, the nice thing about this is across various stakeholders, the result of this $100 test is pretty much the same. Be it the business or IT manager at your organization or the web architect or the web developer, performance seems to be the top of the mind, uh, clearly. And that's mostly because uh, you uh, we realize that you have KPIs or goals associated with improving end user response time or uh, ensuring 99.99% availability. 
uh, and this is uh, and this these KPIs are the ones that are driving the increased interest in performance and security. Uh, we all we all know that developers love the language side of things, so that's the reason we'll continue to focus on the language. So this particular release of Cold Fusion 2018 is going to be performance heavy, followed by language uh, uh, as a part of our focus areas. So just to quickly recap, this is where uh, our focus will be. Uh, so we'll, we'll focus on uh, performance management suite, which is a completely new tool, uh, tool set, multiple tools, in fact, to help you get maximum performance, runtime improvements, distributed cache, automation of lockdown guide, a whole range of interesting language features. I'm particularly interested in asynchronous programming, as well as uh, uh, high performing HTML to PDF conversion, uh, which will be the latest one from Adobe. Uh, so with that, I come to the end of my presentation. So overall, the summary is that, just to summarize, enterprises continue to remain invested in the platform. So that's the key message that I wanted to drive. New organizations are adopting Cold Fusion. So that's the reason you see this increase in the number of active accounts. And more than anything else, Adobe remains committed to the platform. So if you do have any questions or uh, any other feedback, you can always reach out to me. That's my email address, rakshit at adobe.com. So with that, I come to the end of the presentation. I know I just have a few more minutes for any kind of questions that you may have. I'll now just quickly shift to the question and answer part. I know Charlie has been answering a few questions for you uh, in, on behalf of me. And uh, I'll see if I can answer some of the other questions that you. Yeah, I would just say let's have people. Oh, let me clear those polls out. Sorry, that don't don't choose those. Yeah. Okay, no, that that's people answering. Okay, good. Um, so there were only a few questions, actually. So rather than you go back and try to find them, let's just have folks ask them now. There was only a few. Wow, I never realized yep. that we had eight or about ninety at the, at the peak. attendees for this session. That's great. And that happens. They're they're working on it, they're typing. Are there any questions for me? Thanks, Mark. We'll see you in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. William will miss you at CF Summit, hopefully next year. Actually, if you want to address the question about a CF Lite version, you could mention the Express Edition, though it's not meant for production. About 60% of Code Fusion goes unused for my clients. I didn't get that question. Versus Fortune. Are you going to look at improving the tool chain for Code Fusion? Yes, that's the reason you're focusing on some of the tools. For instance, the performance management suite itself is a tool set. And uh, the security analyzer that we that we introduced in Cold Fusion 2016 is one of the tool. Our focus is definitely on not not the entire focus, but our focus is definitely uh, helping you and providing you with tools that can help you get maximum value out of Cold Fusion. Paul has a feedback, quick feedback on Cold Fusion Builder: lack of FTP integration. So FTP integration can can be accomplished through a, a, an Eclipse plugin. Uh, so it, it's not baked in uh, in Cold Fusion Builder. Uh, yeah, that is something for us to for us to think about. So it can be accomplished still because there are a lot of FTP plugins available on Eclipse. Uh, you can still uh, use those for all that FTP integration. Price is too high for new clients. Robert, that's the reason we, we have two versions of the product, the enterprise version as well as the standard edition. Uh, so, and the new clients, uh, the new clients that, that we are talking about actually adopt standard first and eventually progress on to enterprise. William has two requests, more education or certific is that certifications? Getting it into classroom to get students into CF. Second, get hosting companies to start hosting it. So we are making the effort on, in, on both access. For instance, I spoke to you about the freely available education curriculum that is getting decent adoption at community colleges and universities. And the second one is we do have hosting partners that we closely work with 
uh, for uh, making sure that Core Fusion is available uh, for hosting from for a hosting solution. G says, I would love to see a better focus on Java integration, like being able to call a Java method that accepts variable or variables. That's an interesting one. So that is something that we can look at as a part of the language improvements that we have seen. More mobile capabilities via phone gap plus Cordova is most important. So that's already available, uh, Orhan Khan. So that's available as a part of uh, as a part of uh, Core Fusion 11. Penel says, interested in containers. Great. So we'll soon have uh, official images for Cold Fusion 2016. So we would love to hear your feedback on containerization there. When and where do we find out about Cold Fusion Docker images being available? So keep an eye on the blog post, blogs.coldfusion.com. Uh, we'll definitely announce it on the blogs and any other uh, marketing communication that you will get from Adobe. Looking forward to official 2016 container. Great. Thanks for that. Have you considered having CF accept new versions of Solar Engine as they are released? That's a question from Guest. So we do ensure that we are on the latest version with every new version of the product, but not so much with intermediate releases that happen in between releases. Ideally, we want to get there, but sometimes we, we can't really make that happen. But uh, the promise is definitely with, a, with newer major versions, we'll be on the latest version available. I would love to see more info on use using CF, like the Fortune, uh, the Fortune 500 and 100 charts. Okay, so that this is this is just a beginning. Uh, we do have case studies, so you can go to Adobe.com uh, or, the, or the product homepage. Uh, adobe.com slash product slash cold fusion we do have interesting case studies uh, that keeps coming up uh, with cold fusion so that should give you a sense of not just who is using it but also what kind of usage and what are the uh, strengths associated with the product that they really associate with win says can you go back to the slide with who is using cold fusion market share graphs okay yeah. Thanks, and somebody had asked for another out. slide that they wanted to see. So once you get back to that, we can see what the other one they wanted to see was. Look at you. You're good. <laughs> right to it. Done this once or twice, haven't you? There you go. 50% of Fortune awesome. 500 and 70% of Fortune 100. And also do, also do that... It doesn't mean that these Fortune 500 companies only have Cold Fusion as uh, their backend technology. Typically, in large enterprises, there are multiple backend technologies. Some teams use Cold Fusion, some teams use PHP. So it's generally a mix and match of multiple technologies in such really large organizations. Okay, I'll try to go back to question and answer. Was there any other slide somebody said they had wanted to see? Jerry says, can you get Raymond Camden to return to CF? Loved his teaching style and code. Yeah, we miss Ray too. Unfortunately, he's no longer he no longer works for Adobe. Um, so yeah, we definitely miss him on the CF side of things. Are you going to post the slides? 
Um, if there is really a need, just reach out to me, Vince. I can see what I can do. Uh, I did share my email address. You can just send me an email, and um, I should be able to share uh, share some of this, some part of the slide deck with you. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Will Adobe cross license something like Fusion Reactor in the enterprise version? So, Doug, we are building a performance management suite. Uh, it is not Fusion Reactor, but uh, it has all the tools needed to improve your application performance. Is that 70% of Fortune companies, Fortune 100 companies use Cold Fusion or just the ones in your survey? So that was not a part of the survey. So that's a good question. So, so the first and the last charts were based on the survey. Now the 50% and 70% of 50% uh, of Fortune 500 and 70% of Fortune 100, that's not based on the survey. That's based on the customer list, the active customers that continue to buy uh, from us. So that's based on the full list and it's that's not based on my survey. Yeah, Charlie makes an important point there. So there will definitely be some things that Fusion Reactor will do better and the performance management suite will do better. So there will definitely be some uh, uh, areas where one is better than the other. Yes, I think we are at the end of the hour as well. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for joining joining me and Charlie in this uh, online meetup for the, for the 250th one, which is which is all the more special. Hey, Steve, glad to see you here. Charlie was telling me that you were the one who initiated the online meetup, and it's and we are glad to have you on the 250th one. Well, thank you, actually, for coming on. I, I'm glad to see the people saying how much they appreciate the update. That was my sense, was that people really needed to see this information. And, of course, this session, like all the CF meetups, is recorded. So we'll stop it in just a moment, and I'll have it posted as soon as we're done at recordings.coldfusionmeetup.com. And with that, I guess, since most of it's just comments, uh, we'll let Rakshi go. But thanks again, sir, for sticking around a little bit longer. And yes, we'll see you in Vegas, those that come, and Rakshith and me and everybody else. Thanks a lot, everyone. Yeah, I'll definitely see Vegas, some of you in Vegas. Vegas, baby. In just All a right. couple of weeks. See you guys. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Go, yes, sir. Go and, and we look forward to having more talks from anybody at Adobe. Rakshith, if there's any other talks, that maybe if any of the ones that anybody presents at the conference, if they want to repeat them, I'd be happy to have them on here. Charlie, I'm not sure if I spoke when you were speaking because my my speakers were on mute. I oh, I was just saying thank you. And so thanks again. And just re repeating that if you had any um, presenters that give a talk at the summit who you'd like to have give the talk, we'd certainly be happy to have them here. And I'll try to seek it from the other presenters, but I'm just saying if there's any Adobe talks, feel free to have them give them on here. We'd love to have them. Or any future talks they may come up with. I know you have the Dev Week that you do, but between the Dev Weeks, we'd love to have you on. And with that, I'll go ahead and stop the recording.